I had intended this week's video to be about exit grids in the mapper, but since I've discovered there might be a way to keep the mapper from crashing when testing world map exit grids, I thought I'd hold off this for a little bit longer to see if I could figure all that out. Instead of that, this is just going to be an update on what I've learned the last couple weeks from trying to make my Fallout 2 mod. If there's interest, I may try to do this on a regular basis. First thing on the list, when you go to mark an exit grid, and I'll cover this in more depth in my exit grid video, a large swath of exit grids are covered from the originating click. And it doesn't matter if you click on an exit grid or not, the same swath appears either way. Second item up, I had a commenter ask for some help troubleshooting a Windows 10 install of the mapper. His monitor was only showing a black screen whenever he tried to start the mapper up. To try and help, I installed the mapper on my Windows 10 laptop and had very similar symptoms to what the commenter saw, a black screen. So I started searching for an answer, and two options came up that seemed to work. First, reducing the resolution of the mapper to 1600x900 from the desktop resolution of 1920x1080 made the mapper start working correctly again. But the main reason the mapper broke on my laptop was because I had 125% text scaling turned on in the display settings. Which is probably the default since it says recommended here. So the second thing I did was change the scaling down to 100%, and suddenly the mapper worked again. Worked correctly too, at full 1080p resolution. Sadly, this didn't help the commenter with their problem, and none of my other suggestions seemed to help either. Third thing I've learned, there's a version of Sfall for the mapper written by a modder named Crafty, but it's not open source, so there may be some security issues. This mod seems to work similarly to the one for Fallout 2, just not as many features. But it does give it windowed mode, just wish it wasn't a closed source semi-random file on somebody's Google Drive. Number four on this list, my install of the mapper also doesn't work well with any of my new scripts. At first it was suggested I rename all my scripts to eight or less characters, but that didn't change anything. With my current settings, my mapper will only attach the last script I've made whenever I try to attach any of the scripts I've written. All other scripts that came with the mapper work fine though. No clue how to fix this, I've tried adding them to the scripts.h, scripts.lst, and scrname.msg files, and none of these seem to change the mapper's behavior. Thankfully, the mapper still correctly uses scripts that are already attached to critters with the proto manager. Also, I might need to add sername.msg to the install process for making scripts, but it doesn't seem to do anything so far as I've used it, although it's possible I didn't put it in the right folder or something like that. Number five, there's a really easy script you can write to give the player control over any critter in the game, set dude object self object. This new sfall specific command gives you complete control over a critter although it seems like critters don't earn XP in this mode. Combine this with set object visibility dude object one, and you can switch from critter to critter, leaving the previous body invisible. But you have to attach this script to the critter you want to take over in order to get it to work. Everybody thank Navarro for this one because he found it immediately when I started suggesting ideas to him. Number six. This next script will make a critter who sees the player hostile. If object can see object, self object, dude object, then begin self attack dude. Just attach this very simple script to the critter peep proc and you can make a critter hostile on site. Also, apparently the alien critter doesn't have any scripts attached to it by default, but the rad scorpion does. Go figure. Number seven. The current version of the scripter I'm using puts out a confusing and incorrect error message when you click the create dialogue button saying, Fail to open or create associated message file in directory fallout2 slash data slash scripts dot dot slash text slash English slash dialogue, which makes it look like the whole thing is supposed to be in the scripts folder, except it's not. The correct directory is fallout2 slash data slash text slash English slash dialogue. And you'll notice that this is still in the data directory, but it's in its own folder, not the scripts folder. Would have saved me half a day of being stuck in my mod if I had known this earlier. But a big thank you to Navarro who helped me fix it later in the day. And finally on this list, number eight. Apparently there's another way to configure Sfall in the high res patch to produce proper scaling for Fallout 2. But after trying it, I can't tell the difference between the high res mod by itself and the new method, which requires adjusting both Sfall and the high res mod. I'll put them side by side here and you tell me if you can tell the difference. Hopefully YouTube's compression won't destroy the details. On the other hand, this new method may help people with really weird monitor resolutions, so I'll go through it real quick. The settings are a little complicated, and I guess it's intended primarily for people using 1080p monitors, but I'll have a link below to the forum post in case anybody wants to try it out. First, in your Fallout 2 directory, edit the ddraw.ini file and scroll down to the graphics setting. Change the mode to 4, 
and change the graphics width and graphics height to 1920 and 1080. Save your ddraw.ini file, then run the F2 res config program, turn off scaling times two, set the graphics mode to DirectX 9, and set the custom resolution to 960 by 540. That's it. Try it out. See what you think. Leave a comment. Try different settings if that's not working for you, and let me know what works. And if you happen to have something that didn't work before and it works now, please let me know. I'd love to share that information. That's all I've got for this video. If you've got any suggestions to fix any of these problems, please drop a comment or head over to the NNMA forums and leave a comment there. I'll be browsing through those forums on a regular basis as I make my mod, and there are a ton of people there who are really helpful anyway. And I hope you're making an awesome mod, and I can't wait to see what you got.